Okay, guys, let's look at this uh, algebraic concept that is solving for quadratic inequalities for your grade 11 and 12. Mainly, it is covered in grade 11, but it is also examined, but mainly it is examined in grade 12. So you find this in your question 1 in your grade 12. And I will encourage you, if you're already in grade 12 and you did not understand this section, you need to go through this video so that you can understand uh, the quadratic inequalities again remember guys to subscribe to our channel remember to like our videos to leave a comment if you um you want to find out more information or there's something that you want us to cover leave us a comment below and then also you can check more of our resources for online lessons and everything in the website at the end of the lesson or you can see it at the beginning of i mean you just saw it at the beginning of the lesson let us look at this lesson now. As I said, you're solving for x. This is 3 marks. And you are given a question. As you can see, it says 2 minus x, x plus 4, is greater than or equal to 0. Now, you are supposed to solve for x. Now, watch this and see how it, you approach it. Already, you have been given a factorized um, sum. So, it's easy now to move from here. Since they factorize it, this inequality, first of all, you must solve for x and equate it to 0. When you are solving for x and equating, equating it to 0, you, you are getting what we call critical values. So what are the critical values? So you have got your 2 minus x, and then you have got your x plus 4. So for now, you say equal to 0. So the first one, 2 minus x, is equal to 0 or x plus 4 is equal to 0. Now, let me say this before um, I move on. Do not expand. Please do not expand. You, you open that, and you open that, and you do that, and you do that, and then avoid this method. Why? Because after expanding, you are going to either use a quadratic equation, and when you use the quadratic equation, it will still take you back to this answer. So you're just wasting time by expanding and going all the way to, to, to the quadratic formula. What you just needed to do is they have already factorized for you. So you just needed to take it from there. Expanding would be just a waste of time. You still get the same answer, but you are just doing it even more um, difficult for you, making you more open for errors. Now, how do you simple solve uh, for x from here? You see, it's 2 minus x, so the x is negative. We can make the x positive by taking x to the other side of the equal sign, such that it will now say 2 is equal to x changes from negative to positive. Therefore, if you want to write it properly, you can say x is equal to 2. All right, so that's what we're having on this side. Okay, now how about the second one here? You have got x is plus 4 is equal to 0. Take uh, 4 to the other side it's positive it will become negative so what are you going to have? you're going to have x is equal to negative 4 now these two values that we got here if I can just use a different pen these two values that we got here as I said we call them critical values alright so that's what we call we call them critical values you're going to use um, these two points when you now sketch your graph. From here, what do you do? Then you do what you call, as I said, sketching of your graph. So what you're going to do, you're going to have a number line. And in the number line, you're going to have your critical values here. And your critical values, remember, x is equal to minus 4 and 2. Now, if you remember your number line, numbers, this direction is negative and this direction is positive. You must remember that. So, when you're going to do your number line, you can see that minus 4 starts as well as after that you get your 2. So, it's just like a normal number line where you've got maybe 0 here, you've got 1, you have minus 1, you have minus 2, and so on. You've got minus 5, you have minus 6, and so on. You've got 2, you have 3, you have 4. So this is like a number line in a way that you're having. 
so I didn't want to have that but just remind yourself of a, a normal number line but what you are more focused on is the values of x that you're getting those critical values whereby x is minus 4 and x is equal to 2 this is where this graph or where this equation will equal to 0 when you've done that you have to do what to say we call testing you have to test for the signs so i'm going to test for the signs now what do i mean for saying test for the signs i'm going to show you that what you do is you take your calculator and choose any value that is before four like for example um, minus five minus six as i said is called go, it goes this direction so let's choose maybe minus eight and you put that value into your original uh, question so what you have is we have got two minus remember i said i would choose negative eight so it's minus minus eight close the bracket but it's more proper to open there and open there and close there but be careful the way you're doing it don't make errors you see there is the first open bracket there is the second open bracket so we must close it twice then open another one i've got x plus four my x is negative eight plus four when i've done that i'm going to equal to I, i'm not concerned about the answer here i'm concerned about the sign what is important for me is the sign so i'm getting a negative sign so i'm going to come here and say this gives me a negative sign so i put my negative there that is what I mean when you say test for the signs. Before 4, I'm getting a negative. You come now and look for the values between negative 4 and 2. Any number, it can be minus 3, it can be 1, it can be 0. You see there is 0 in between negative 4 and 2. You have got 0, so I'm going to use the simple one 0. So I've got 2 minus 0, and then I've got 0 plus 4. If I say equal to, I'm not interested in the answer, I'm interested in the sign. 8 here is positive, so I'm going to have a positive there. Now I'm going to test with a number that is after 2. Let's say 3 there. Remember here I used 1, here I used negative 8. So I'm going to test with 3. If I'm testing with 3, similarly, it's 2 minus 3, and then it's 3 plus 4. If I do that, I'm getting a negative 7, but don't worry with the number. Worry um, much with the sign. It's negative, so I'm going to get a negative there. There are only two possible situations you're going to get. It's either you get the situation that is given above, or you'll get a situation like this. I'm going to erase that. You'll get a situation whereby if you start with the positive, you will be followed with the negative, and then with the positive. It's either this or the one below. You won't get any different uh, option now you won't get something like this find that you have got this and you have got minus minus and a plus you won't get that or you won't get something like this now to say a plus and a plus and minus you won't get that neither will you get a plus and a plus and a plus neither will you get a negative and a negative ne no the only options you are going to get are two of them and the options are if either negative, positive, negative, or positive, negative, and positive. Remember that. As long as you're dealing with two critical values like this, that is what you're going to get. So in this case, it's giving me those um, negative, positive, and negative. Now, how do or why am I doing all this? I'm doing all this for this purpose. Let me just show you why this is done. So... What I have, let me write again the question. I have got here 2 minus x and I've got x plus 4. I'm going to use a big sign to say this is greater than or equal to 0. I'm using the big sign intentional. Now that word greater than, this sign means greater or bigger. Now any number that is bigger than 0 any number that is bigger than zero is after zero so numbers that are bigger than zero it can be one it can be four they are greater than zero it can be ten ten is greater than zero so it is any number which is greater than zero so that sign greater than there 
means we are looking for numbers that are positive. Now, because you're looking for numbers that are positive, you go here to your table and you also look for the space where you saw that positive. So which is the region you're looking for? It is that region. So in other ways, you are matching the positive of the sign and the positive of your testing. When you get that sign and you have matched, your answer is now between minus four and two. And how do you write it? You put your X in the center and you put these signs. They're always facing this direction. And this one will always face that direction. Then you put your critical value minus four and you put your another critical value two. This is how you're going to write it. You are not going to write it like this now, X. And then you've got minus four and you've got two. You are not going to write it like that. You are going to write it. Let me repeat again and you see what I just did. When it's in the center like this, you're going to have your X because X is between these two numbers. So sometimes I usually say to students with a pencil, you can actually put your X there and then you do this and then you do this. You see how it can uh, come out, but that's not how you represent your answer. Of course, you are going to write your X in the center here separately. You have that sign. It's always facing like that. And you have that sign. It's always facing like that. Here it will be two. Here it will be minus four. How is it read? Minus four is less than or equal to X and X is less than or equal to two. That is how you write your answer. Now, a quick one. Someone may wonder and say, what if I'm given like this? What if I've got this? And this was the question. Let me write it down here. The new question of this is two minus X and X plus four now is less than or equal to zero. Now look at the sign now, it says less than. Remember our critical values? The critical values were minus four and two. So now when looking at the less sign, now the less, the signs, these testings will always remain the same, but now because you're looking for less, anything that is less than zero is negative. It's less than, smaller than zero, it is negative. So you come here and you identify the negative areas are that one and another negative area is this one. So the region you're looking for is that region and this region. Now, because you're looking for that region, how were you going to write your answer? You're going to write your answers like this. Usually, as I said, remember the arrows, the arrows are going this direction. You already see the sign. That's the sign you're going to use here. That is the greater than sign. So what you do is you start with your X greater than the critical value is two. So you saw how I did that. The arrow where it's pointing is like your sign. So this is how we write it in this region. So you're going to say here X, anything after two is greater than two. But, but because they use the word all equal to, you also maintain equal to. On the other side of the negative, again, look at the arrow. The arrow is pointing this direction. So you start with your X, that arrow, and you have your four, negative four there. So that's what you'd be actually writing, meaning X is less than four. So what you're gonna have is, you're going to have your X is less than negative four. But remember, it's less than or equal to four. So this is what you write if the regions were not in the center, but on the outside. The answers are always like that. So in other ways, this will always change. These will always change, but you'll always have X is greater than or equal to something, which is the critical value, or X is less than or equal to something, which is your critical value. So it will always be like that. This will change, and this will change based on your different solution of X. Again, on your values, when they're in the center, it will always be like that. The only thing that will keep changing is those critical values like that. Now, please avoid this situation. As I said, avoid or don't be tempted to say this is what students do. When they get the answer that and they get that, this is what they write. They will say X. They use that sign that was in the question is greater than or equal to two. And then they'll say or X 
um, is greater than or equal to minus 4. Now, if I go back to the original answer, remember it was minus 4 and it was 2. It says minus 4 is less than or equal to x. So x is here. x is greater than or equal to minus 4. So which means you are going to get this one correct. But the next one says x is less than 2. You are going to get that one wrong. Because you cannot just use the sign just like that and think that the answer will be like that. So this is how you approach your quadratic inequalities. And I hope this was uh, of benefit to you guys. I will also post another lesson some other time, part two of this, so that this whole concept can sink in, so that you can understand how to use this kind of table method that I've done, done here to solve your quadratic inequalities. We've come to the end of our lesson. Remember guys to like our channel, remember to subscribe to our channel, remember to share our channel, and we will also appreciate it when this also helps more and more people. We've come to the end of our lesson. Thank you.